And from James, James challenges us to look at things differently. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises in its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flowers falls, or its flowers falls, and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. James challenges us to change our perspectives. As we continue on our uh, message series called Driving Force, looking at what motivates people of the Bible, and how that same motivation affects us. James is challenging us to be motivated by joy, even in times of trial. And that almost seems counterintuitive, because when when times of trial hit, we're not always optimistic, are we? When times of trial hit, we don't feel joyful. But I'd recommend that we start to think about the differences that we find between joy and happiness. Sometimes in our English language, we have so many different words and we start to group them all together. But we don't realize the depth of how each word, what the depth of each word is. I'd like to watch part of a video. It's called, true, What is True Joy? They listed a few things that are, we might think that would make us feel joy or happiness. Popularity. Who's happy when they're popular? Like, it's nice to be popular. It's nice to have friends. It's nice to have everyone looking at you. And yet, popularity at times also brings a great stress, and it can also be very shifting. Purpose or a job. It's nice to know where the money comes from. It's nice to have something that we feel that we can do well. It's nice to know what we are to be doing. And it's not just, purpose isn't just a job. It is knowing why we are here. Health. Health, we think that is some, when, we are, when we are healthy, when we are at the top of our game, when everything is going right, it allows us to be joyful or happy. Now, happiness is different than joy. Joy, actually, start off with happiness. Happiness is said by one person, 
is a mile wide and about an inch deep. Happiness itself is an emotion that changes. Too often we get stuck in thinking of happiness as something that is very deep, and yet what we're talking about when we talk about the depth of happiness really is we're moving over into joy. But we interchange the two way too much. Happiness can change. Who here, whose emotions have ever changed from one to another to another in a day? Okay. How many has it changed in a conversation? Let's be realistic. It can change a lot. You start off being happy. It's great. It's great. Then they say something. It's like, oh, dear. And then they say something else. Or you say something, and it just blows up from there. You, you get to experience the whole emotional spectrum right then and there. And suddenly, it's not joyful anymore. You may not be happy. You may come back around to happiness. I hope you do. But we have to re realize that happiness can change. Happiness is an emotion like sadness, like fear, like anger. Emotions aren't bad. What we do with them can be, though. Joy is something deeper. Joy is a deep well that is stored up and used throughout every time and situation of our lives. Joy does not, having joy in your heart does not mean you will always be happy. Let's get that straight. Having joy in our heart does not mean that we will always be happy. Having joy in our heart means that sometimes we will be sad. But the joy that is stored in our very being, in our soul, that comes from the Lord, that is a strength unto us, a gift from God, means that when we face those times of sadness, those times of anger, those times of fear, we will not be overcome by them. But that we'll have this joy that is leading us, that is rooted in Jesus. It is not just in ourselves, but it is rooted in Jesus. And James is challenging his readers and us to reach deeper, to reach past just the level, the shallow surface of happiness, so that we will have that root, that depth that we can draw from and not just be leaves blowing in the winds of change. Because have you ever, I was trying to blow or sweep leaves out of the door the other day and it was kind of windy and they didn't go where I wanted them to. Actually, just the mere sweeping action blew a few others away from where I wanted them to go. They kept moving, not necessarily in the direction I wanted them to go. And sometimes we can be like those, very, those same leaves. That when things keep changing, we keep blowing in the wind also. It doesn't mean that we don't change, but where are we rooted? Where are we anchored? Are we anchored just in our emotions? Are we anchored just in our thoughts? Are we anchored in Jesus Christ? James challenges us to look at the trials we face and to see where Jesus is in them. That it's not just about what is happening to us and our feelings in response to what is happening, but can we have that same joy, that, can we have that same security that Jesus is there present and we can, can we see how Jesus is working in our lives through this? It doesn't mean we will like what is happening. But will the joy of the Lord keep us rooted in Christ so that we will get through it? And as I've been thinking a lot this week, seeing how joy is tied in with hope and with peace. That they work together, drawing us closer to Jesus. That as we walk through times of darkness, and if we look at the, the scriptures between the last book of the Old Testament, last book that was written in the old, from the Old Testament to the coming of Christ, there's what they call a dark time of about 400 years where they didn't hear from the Lord. Do we have that hope that even if there is silence, do we have that joy that is welling up inside of us, that is tied and anchored into Jesus, that when we face those dark times, we will be able to get through? Or is our anchor so shallow 
not reaching anything that is of worth, that will hold us fast and we will just start to shift and sway and be blown away. When we are anchored in Jesus, when we face those trials or those temptations, and we always do, we don't live in a closeted life. Especially at this time of year, there's lots of temptations. Who here likes the goodies? Yeah, some of you, okay. Who here likes all the good food? There's temptations. There's also temptations for greed. There's temptations to be angry, for fear, to hate, for lust. I finally had what they had. Have you ever heard that? There's a little bit of lust in that. Lusting after what others have that you don't. Will we stay rooted in Jesus when we face these temptations? Or will we give in and follow for them? And all these temptations lead to heartache. And then we try to solve it our own way. Or we come back to Christ. But did we have to go and get, go through that heartache first? Will we stay rooted in Christ who brings us joy, who helps us through the, through the times of trial and temptation? Or will we give in to our desires, as James warns against? We need to change our perspective so that we can see Jesus through all of life and that all these things can bring us closer to him. That when we face the different struggles we face, when we face the hardships, when we face the joys... Where do we turn? Are we turning to ourselves? Sometimes. But sometimes we also find ourselves limited and hurting also. Sometimes we turn to others. And sometimes they give great advice. Sometimes it's actually from God, which is a bonus. They are showing God's love but sometimes they also disappoint us. Or sometimes they fail us in a way that we weren't expecting. Yet the scriptures tell us that Jesus never fails us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He's never too busy. He doesn't need to get his rest. I do sometimes. You do. He's now not out on a dinner date. He's not writing his final exam and all stressed out about it. He doesn't, have an, he doesn't have a work assignment that needs to get done and he's got his phone turned off and he won't listen to you. He's there and he hears every word you speak, every groan you make. The scriptures tell us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It doesn't say how we'll be feeling at that time. But it does say that there is strength that we can draw from, from the Lord. Will we trust him in his faithfulness to work through us and in us? Will we be rooted in him and that joy welling up that we will not be overwhelmed or consumed by what we face, both the struggles and the accomplishments? Because sometimes when we accomplish something, we start thinking a little bit too much of ourselves, don't we? That it's all about me and I can do this, that, and the other thing. I've gone the top of the world. The unfortunate thing is that sometimes people who are on top of the world come plummeting down. Will our joy keep us rooted and grounded in Christ and not just in ourselves, not just in other people? But will we have that eternal blessing of knowing Jesus is there with us? Let us pray. Gracious God, we 
We don't always understand, and it doesn't always make sense. You've challenged us to hold on to the joy that you bring us. And sometimes we think that joy should always mean that we feel great and that we're on top of the world, that we're all bubbly. And yet the reality is we're not always that way. Sometimes we are tired and weary. But Lord, the joy that you call us to is a joy that also involves rest. It involves growth. It involves life and being present even when there is hurt and suffering. Even when we are on top of the world and things seem great, the joy that you call us to is a joy that is rooted in you and brings us into unity with you. It's not just about us. It's about what you are doing in us and through us. Lord, help us to have the depths of joy that overcomes and is not overwhelmed. that brings peace instead of despair. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.